see what the G have on the cards here and how this draft has, will develop. I imagine OMG will still go towards a Volley Bear ban that we saw Vici left open in the last game. Yep. I think Volley Bear is just so damn strong. I mean, they're back on blue side here for VG Gaming, the side they won on in game one. LeBlanc's still going to be banned away through respect of Zika. Bard, after the last game, will also be taken. Spire taking on support. Ash is still up and available. The Twisted Fate that VG have been going for. Volley Bear is still there, so we will see the Aphelios or the Volley Bear get through here, which I imagine will be one or the other for first pick for VG. Okay. Eyes on. TF is a ban as well. Quite uh, popular here in our league. In Graves. All right. I was going to say, there is an argument here to leave open one of these power picks. As OMG, you're basically guaranteed one of them. SMLZ's favorite champion by far has been the Aphelios with 14 games on it so far. Dude. So he would have loved to get his hands on it. Absolutely loves this pick. Uh, I think is the person who's played it the most. Uh, alongside Puff on IG. I like this call from Vici, though, to go for the Aphelios. Because what does Aphelios love? And everyone jumps in on top of his face. This, if you go towards the Volley Bear here, enables that playstyle so very well here for Aphelios. So you mean that, that means that then from OMG's side, you are doubling down on, okay, well, we're going to get into the nitty gritty. We're going to get close to this Aphelios and give him the opportunity to play his style again. With the Volley Bear we talked about. Other 80 carries for SMLZ though. He's played Ash, he's played Callista. Also played things like Siva, Kaiser, and AP Cog. So you never know with SMLZ. I think it'll still be the Ash. I imagine that's going to be the game plan here. Um, SMLZ actually did has had some good games on this Ash. Mm -hmm. um, have to see if that is going to be the case. Although it looks like at the moment they're like, right, well, there's no pressure on us to go towards a AD carry pick here. We can lock that in on the third rotation. I'm just going to go for a support pick here instead. Kind of ironic when the most played support from Cold, who's normally on this roster, is the Thresh. So Sora's going to show us what he can do with the champion as that gets locked away. Because I actually really want to do this again, knowing what he's into. I'd be curious to see. So what we could have here is something like that Nidalee come through and go towards, or the Kindred, and then go towards a Galio in the mid lane for Zika. Because you know already with the way that this Volley Bear wants to play, you will already have OMG diving in on top of you. So I wouldn't hate going towards something like that uh, Galio instead in the mid lane, but looks like Ikes wants to go back towards the front. His most played, now going to be his fifth game. Maestro back on what he knows as well in the Nort as his fourth. So we're getting real comfort here while you have a Thresh. Callista for SMLZ would really knuckle down that lane. It does mean as well that OMG are going to be on a timer here, though. They want to get in. They want to play this uh, early game very, very strong. Use Callista when she's strong. Use this Volley Bear engage when he's strong as well. And try and snowball this game. Oh, oh do it we've again. seen it before. Oh, okay. Here we go. So for anyone who missed it, SMLZ has already played this Kog'Maw bot lane. It is the AP style of Kog'Maw. We can take the Arcane Comet. And then as well, you go in towards like your Seraph's Embrace, the Rileys, the Leandris Torment, this style of Kog'Maw. And he's been spamming it a lot in solo queue, like a lot. If you go to his OP.GG, it's incredible how many games he actually has on it. So SMLZ back on his recent comfort while we have to see what is partnered up in the solo lanes. We don't really have a solo lane for anyone unless Curse does take that towards the top side in the volley. You're going to ban away Zeke as Akali, which wasn't too successful in game two. It's anything that can get access to this back line. So True. there's always the potential here with that uh, Syndra being banned to then ban away something like the Azir. So you get a super strong uh, line up to just allow the Kog'Ma to hide behind, but they just want to make sure that any assassins that could potentially come out with an Azir ban are off the table. But I would be surprised if you see Sika go towards the Akali again. I think it was a bit of a one-hit wonder on this case. We should also throw in the caveat that across the rest of the world and through Solo Q2 that Kog'Ma technically a flex because he is played towards the mid. We don't know what Icon's been doing. Of course, Icon as a Solo Q player does a lot of crazy stuff as well. So I wouldn't put it past him, but of course at this point, Vici banning away mid laners. Do expect the Cogmore to be bot as his Azir's taken away. Now, mid or top? Slash jungle. What are OMG going to pick? Be interesting to see, because there is always the opportunity here for OMG to just fully pivot and go towards something like the Karma again for a curse and play yeah. this super long range poke style composition. Uh, but it looks like with the Renekton over here, they're eyeing up that uh, Volley Bear for Hacker in the jungle. Curse will get his hands on this Renekton. And they are going full in on, okay, we've got our two beefcakes in the front line. Let's go fight. 
Especially when you don't have cubes or uh, cannon available. It's this comfort pick and it's played many times into this matchup. While Zika, you speak of comfort. One of his most played is the Zoe. And the I Zoe would be able to run into the considering the Cassidy, because the thing about the Kog'Maw here is that you need a lot of time to ramp up. Uh -huh. um, so there is always an opportunity here to go towards Kassadin and go, right, well, while you're scaling, we're going to scale. And there is that assassin threat that we were talking about for the Kog'Maw. But it looks like instead he's going to try and match poke for poke, look to see if he can pick off a few of these members or even get some nice damage onto this immobile Kog'Maw in the back line. And for the first time in this series, I think for Vici, we'll see a bit of a more, I wouldn't say laid back comp, but you know what I mean. Got a lot of options towards the mid to late game this time around for VG Gaming. The only thing here is for iBoy, it's going to be a bit of a weird one for him. So, as look, with Vici's composition, you are very much looking for this heavy engage tool. You've got the Ogren, you've got Nautilus to go and set you up, you've got these sleepy trouble bubbles here as well from Zika. So, they're very much a okay, we're going forward, we want to aggress style, and even a little bit of poke from Zika. However, the thing for iBoy here is trying to get access to these fights is going to be really, really tough. You already have to deal with this Kog'Maw who's going to be able to use the Rider's Crystal Scepter and this long range poke to be a nuisance for you in the back line, which is relatively short range. Now you've got this Orianna as well who can control the midline in fights where she can play a little bit further forward, make sure that she's got the um, orb or the ball to make sure that she's always contesting where iBoy wants to be positioned. So be curious to see how iBoy does play these fights and if he can play at least away from a lot of this backline threat that OMG have in their two cards. You know what I was scared about there? I saw the hover of the Silas, and I thought, well, there's a big chance that Icon plays Renekton mid, but of course it's not going to be the case. We just get a bit, bit of normality here to finish off the series. But this series has been anything but normal. Vici showed us a dominant game one. OMG showed us a dominant game two. And now... Everything's out on the table. We've got a game three with an AP Cogmore and a fat Oriana for Icon. The ability for them to snowball and run out of control still there. And the ability for Vici to maybe sit back a little bit. Also, as we talked about with conditions. In this final game, whose cuisine will reign supreme? Did you ever watch The Iron Chef? Was that it was a great no, show? No, I know the show, but I haven't watched it, no. I, I like the little spirit blossoms, by the way, on the, the Champs Yeah. Screen. But continue with your cuisine. Well, it would that would be the intro, right? Or, you know, like the outro. And then it'd be like, it's The Iron Chef from either Japan or, 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 or China or, or somewhere. I can't remember the other regions. Great show. Any Australians remember that on SBS as we enter Summoner's Rift for the third and last time in this series. And the pink throughout the air. We've, uh... Someone's had a bushfire. <laughs> it's smoky out there. Seriously, like, um, back when in Australia, when I was there in December, yes. when unfortunately there were a lot of bushfires around Christmas, it was the colour of the air. I've actually got a photo up on Instagram or slash Twitter where it's like, the sky is red. Yeah. And it's kind of scary. It still breaks my brain a little bit that your guys' Christmas is the summer. Oh, it's hot. Like, yeah. You jump in the pool for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. You eat cold prawns, oysters. You know, you smoke salmon and creme fraiche. And, uh, Your classic Christmas meal. Yeah, <laughs> dude. And then, then you have your, your big pork. If anyone hasn't eaten like I have, and this is going to make you really hungry. You get your pork, your ham, your, your big... Do we have chicken? What do we have? No, turkey. turkey. <laughs> I actually did duck last year as well. Tea smoked Ooh, nice. duck. Yeah, with a, a bit of hoisting over it as well. I, th I had this conversation with Munchkins, and who was it? That we Actually, no, it was, was with you guys. We were talking about uh, duck fat or goose fat on your roast potatoes Duck fat, for duck fat, brother. Oh, yeah. it's so good. Oh, my God. Duck fat is a miracle. <laughs> that thing is not good. It's not good for you, but boy, does it taste good. Dude. Under the rift, everyone just noticed, we talked about this in champs, like SMLZ is Comet because he will be AP Cog. In this bottom lane, as we get a bit of a hover, a lot of mana available with Presence of Mind and Mana Flow Band, plus the cooldown reduction and the late game scaling. He is going to be a menace. He has a bit of CDR in his uh, other rune sets. So. And as he talked about Vici taking it easy, well, OMG can also take it easy if they would like to in this early stages, because you do have SMLZ is going to scale. You've also got Icon who's going to scale relatively well. The crucial factor for me here, though, is that Hacker has such a massive advantage when it comes to his clear in the jungle. He is so much faster than Ike's, who's got to go more through this um, single target camps to try and set himself up. 
So as Hacker, what I'd love to see him do is, which is what we're looking at the moment, this full clear into go towards that scuttle at that 315, back and just have so much more advantage into how quickly he can clear into getting better items, into back onto the map before Ikes can really contest and look for a gank around that level four mark. It was currently towards that top side where Scuttle's being pinged out by Vici Gaming. There is a ward in River though that'll be spotted out if he walks through. But at this point, note that you know the jungle matchup has been pretty crucial. Ike's failed to do anything in game number two, and we're to a third where now invading in. Hacker's going to spot this out of ward placed down his own. There is a bit of priority in mid through Zika, so Ike's can walk up, clear away this ward, and safely walk through mid. And kind of just get the shove if he pleases. Yeah, Ix is a little bit worried because Curse does have to troll the top side. Zika can shove in this mid lane, but more than likely what Ix is thinking is, look, I've got Zika who's got control mid. I've got my bottom lane who's got control there. I'm just going to take the safe for option here and go for this bottom side scuttle now. It does mean, as we were talking about, Hacker can go for a faster clear here where he can go towards scuttle, back in towards his Krugs if he wants to. But I imagine Hacker's going to back here off of the quicker camps is cleared, get himself a nice L back, get some better items, and then come back onto the map. Yeah. Potentially here for him to go towards Krugs as well. Yeah, going to be doing that for now. As High Boy in the bottom lane is set a bit too far forward, but so is Sora. It will get hit pretty hard. Nice little hook from Maestro is the bottom lane suffering. I mean, you don't you look at Cogmore as having great dueling when he goes AP until he gets that old at least. Yeah, it's a bit of burst. Bit of burst. Yeah, cool. Bit of burst. Bit he of a little bit. He's got a lot of um, wave clear as well. Because usually with the AP Cogma, you'll max the E first. Yeah. So you wave clear super effectively. You've got a good amount of poke with that. And it actually makes it really difficult for the likes of Maestro to position aggressively to try and get on top of him. Same when it comes towards Ibo as well, because of that relatively slow ra or low range. It makes it a lot easier for SMLZ to apply the slow, get the damage, and then follow up with a couple of auto attacks. As well. Can you imagine the League of Legends janitor that has to clean up after him, though? God, the floors will be messy. <laughs> I, I, I now have this image of like a bunch of minions that come out when everything's done. And they yeah, just get the with little, the mops. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Because you got to think, there are there are some workers on the rift. Because look, the you know, when Worlds comes along, they redesign the stone. True, yeah. yeah. And you know, at the moment in the mid lane, I feel like that's redesigned as well. Do you remember that, that old comic that was out? The one that broke everyone's heart, where it was like two minions that fell in love and... Then one, they had like numbers as to when they were supposed to come out from the Nexus to oh go no. out the battlefield. And one of them stole the the number of the other one. So that minion would go out first. So he died, but the other minion survived. And it was oh like, no. oh no, it made me feel so bad for what's happening. But kind of sad. Hey. Uh, mid, Zika will spot out Hacker. He just tries to run at him. Icon does a bit of damage down. That's crucial. Uh, this lane is quite fickle as Redemption picked up. That's unlucky when you do all this hard work and you get a redemption. So I want to point out what's happened with the two junglers here. Because obviously you can see Hacker's hit that level 5, whereas Ike's is still on level 4. So the reason that this is happening is because... Remember what we talked about at the beginning with Hacker going for this full clear yeah. and clearing in his jungle? Speed, it means all yeah. of his camps are respawning at level 3, which means that when he clears each camp, he's able to get more experience and he starts approaching that level 5 faster. Ike's, on the other hand, was only able to go for these single target camps that he cleared. So he went buff to buff, he did his wolves, and he also did that grog. But it means that his raptors and his krugs are both still at level one. So when he goes to clear them, he's not gaining as much experience from those camps, and he has to kill them to let them respawn at the higher level. So that's why when we look at Hacker, mm. this is why Volley Bear is so strong, because he's great gank potentially, super beefy, but his clear is incredible. And now with that lead, he's going to force a bit of an engage. Ike's forced to flash himself. The scuttle was secured by Vici, but at the cost of the summoner is quite large. And you talk about this experience difference, of course, there is no catch-up experience in the jungle. Hasn't been for a while. He actually, Ender was talking about it last night during the G2 and Schalke Bonanza, whatever <laughs> that game was, because boy, oh boy, I'm glad that was a best of one. That kind of feels a... Whew, G2 look a bit... I'm tiptoeing here. G2 look rubbish. <laughs> uh, I, I gotta make hard opinions. Raz left, and you know what he said to me? He said, Make hard opinions. And ever since, I've been a very good boy. But coming back to this, what was I talking about? <laughs> the, the neutral objectives that Ender was talking about last night uh, still have that catch up experience, remember? So, Dragons, Rift Herald, and the ability for you know, someone like Ikes to look ahead. But he has been farming well. He has been on an even pace packer so far. The CS lead is a bit in his favor.
as red and blue will spawn again. And look, all we're going to see is at the moment a little bit of a slower pace there to game. Both these squads are pretty happy to continue at this pace because you've still got an East SMLZ who's looking to scale. But as I say, that hacker. Oh, flash make play. Plays. And hacker's going to flash in as well. Late from iBoy. The shield that comes through is enough. And iBoy kiting back, but it's way too late. Maestro might have to accept his fate as well as a flash back up. Sorry, flight. Maestro's dead. SMLZ gets a kill. And that's a whoopsie, but a good gank from OMG. Fantastic gank for OMG, especially as you see SMLZ running the teleport, so doesn't have those bad summoners, but curse. Things are coming down over the top of Ikes, but the red buff won't be taken. No trade from Vici Gaming. And they're going to get the dragon out of this as well. So SMLZ gets this lovely back now where he'll be able to finish that uh, last chapter, which means that then he'll be totally fine for mana as we start to go in towards these... Uh, Moments where he wants to start spamming that level six, but this is a great ga gank. You've already got the boots completed here for Hacker, so he's able to get into this lane so much better. Sora as well, setting up these plays beautifully. Yep. So the two kills go over towards Vici, one crucially going to SMLZ, accelerating him towards that later stage. He's got himself lost chapter. He's got the tear in pocket as well. We come back to live, and Vici's response is towards his Herald, but OMG are making the move. SMLZ bot, but with a TP. Now, Vici should be able to get this. So, what Ike's identified was that with Hacker playing towards that bottom side, then hearing the dragon going down, he knew he had a lot of time to turn towards this objective. Plus, hey, look, he had control over the top side for a cube too, so it makes a lot of sense for him to pick that up. OMG can't get out towards that objective fast enough. And now we're looking at, okay, two kills, a bit of a gold lead going over to OMG. There's the opportunity here for Vici to once again try and accelerate one of their lanes with that Rift Herald. I'd love to see it go down towards Zika here. Or sorry, go into mid lane towards Zika, though. Because although iBoy in the later stages of the game will be super, super strong, the issue is is enabling iBoy in fights is going to be a little bit difficult as we talk about Icon and SMLZ. So getting Zeke ahead, getting the burst damage on the Zoe can do far more for Vici over OMG. And he has kept up in CS, so crucially has enough gold, as same as Icon at this point. But OMG are ahead by 1,000 gold at 9 minutes into the game. That comes off the bottom lane play. Also some... Small CS leads, like the one in the mid lane. Jungle's even, top's even. Actually, props to Cube. Uh, reverse matchup last game, Cube was ahead by about 30 CS, was the only one on VG Gaming who had a CS lead. This time around, Curse hasn't been able to exemplify that, hasn't been able to push that out. Cube's been farming pretty well. And <laughs> this is a weird game three for Squid, right? Yeah. Because... It's been pretty action-packed so far in this series, and we've seen both games end within that 28-minute mark, but when we're looking at you know, iBoy, who's got this affinity, he's looking for the Infinity Edge, he's looking for that Runins, he's looking for that Phantom Dancer. Is actually maybe? Uh, Shockwave is available. Ike's to support. He'll burn, thanks to the Spellbook, and no Shockwave. No problem, apparently. Dissonance still does a bit of damage, and Icon will be able to get the shove out here as well, and Zika might have to back without a TP. Yeah, Zeke is still should be fine here. Icon low on mana as well, so it's not like he's going to be able to push the wave particularly effectively. So you see Icon's going to back as well. Um, Zika, though, should be able to finish maybe this Luthor's Echo here? Not quite. So he would have loved to have that opportunity here to finish off that item and get himself into a good spot, but unfortunately for himself, he's not quite able to do so. So we're still going to wait for Vici to have a bit more impact when Zika does get that Luton's Echo completed. Also, the potential here for Ikes to try and play through mid with Zika when you've got the Sleepy Trouble Bubble into the likes of this pillar. But when you've got Cleanse still on Icon, and you've always got to be wary of Hacker lurking in the wings, I don't think Vici are going to make any sort of plays early. Yeah, we'll hold our thought. Uh, at the very least, apologies, Zika did use his TP because it was coming off a cooldown after burning the heal from the unsealed spell book. So, was able to TP back to lane and hasn't missed anything. Icon got his back off as well. Wasn't able to pick up his first item either. Zika now has the ghost in hand. And I'm looking towards the top left to see if these mid laners get their first items before the mountain dragon spawns. Sora and Hacker just positioning, getting ready for this one. Top laners, do they have TP? Well, Cube will have it by then. So, second dragon in this series. Each game has pretty much been a fight. I'm waiting for that second dragon. It'd be interesting to see, though, because <coughs> at least when you look at Aphelios, usually we're like, hey, look, Aphelios wants to start getting up towards that Infinity Edge and being really, really strong. But when you're against uh, AP Kog'Maw, 
Aphelios' consistent damage outweighs the impact that SMLZ can have in this fight. So when we look towards Zika, who's going to be pretty strong, as he can provide a bunch of burst, and Cube as well, I give that edge at this dragon fight over towards Nietzsche. So I want to see if they can set up for it. They are backing now, so we'll take them 30 seconds to get back onto the map. Does give it a lot of control over to OMG, who have already got their own resets through. So they can get control of this river, get Vision down, and make it very difficult for Vici to actually approach in if they do this correct. Oh, running in head first, yeah. Uh, Ike's going to be challenged. Pillar placed down 20 seconds, but it doesn't look like Ike's is going to back. Nor is SMLZ, actually. He went back earlier and picked up the Seraphs. And he's getting up some solo turret flooding, so... Fun time here for the... I mean, it's Arcanist Cogmore. No, what's the new skin called? I don't know, it's like Schoolboy Cogmore. That's what it looks like. He's got a backpack yeah, on. Yeah, I think it is... Arcanist. I think it's a book. I think it's a book. It is, it's a book, yeah. It's it not Arcanist. Arcanist already exists. I don't know what's called. It's a new one. Galact it's one from Galactic the Galactic Spew Cogmore. It's from know. the fantasy land. I don't know. Okay. It's fun, yeah. Oh, but yeah. either way, uh, OMG are the ones that are going to pick up this dragon for themselves. There's two dragons gone across, and I They're honestly fine. thought that maybe Beachy would have been able to make something happen here. Um, SMLZ still scaling. Icon hasn't got his full, first item completed, and I think you can play it a long enough range with Zika where you can pick off or poke off members of OMG and then look to start the fight afterwards, but Vici not feeling confident about it instead. Gift open another mountain, but it will mean they have the potential to pick up three ocean dragons for themselves, or even that fourth oh, ocean boy, dragon yeah. for themselves. And that is beautiful against the poke that SMLZ has. In the same regard, not bad if you're OMG who can pick that one up because you got poke for Zika to deal with, and that'll be made a little bit easier in this final game. As Mid lane lead for Icon. He's uh, sitting on a bit of gold as well, but doesn't seem like he's going to let Zika back. He's just picked up the blue buff. Zika behind 25 CS. Crucial to note, we are heading towards the Ocean Souls Dagda said, but also another Herald coming up in under a minute. Actually, under 20 seconds now. Yeah, you can see already though, OMG are moving in early to this. and. This is actually really good from OMG. A lot of the time we've seen them late on these objectives where they don't back in time, they're not getting the resets in, and they'll end up gifting across these Rift Heralds and Dragons towards enemy teams. But Vici actually not interested at all in fighting. They want to just make plays instead. Yeah, TP burnt. They want to kill Curse. Pillar flashed away from Call the Forge God is the final follow-up. That misses too. A lot burnt to be on this bottom side of the map. They lose Herald. And with SMLZ having a shoved wave, I feel like OMG are going to have a... Much better push once this goes down. They will, but it does take time for it to go down. You have an Aphelios with Severum on that bottom lane structure. It's going to go down just as quick as you can see. So now Vici yep. have the opportunity to just trade back and forth. They, you can see they've already sent multiple members from Vici back to go against any sort of push that comes through. But already, good call here from OMG to read. Hey, look, we don't need to invest this Rift Herald topside. We've got enough damage as SMZ is already been poking the structure. We'll get his own piece of that gold. 175 in his back pocket wall. Hang on, solo kill territory. Zika lands, flashes away. Trouble levels there, but this is what's been happening in the lane the whole time. Icon's had so much damage in his kit. He uses cleanse, Zika uses flash. Icon's had a great series. Even in game number one, despite the fact that they lost, Icon was ahead 20 to 30 CS. Yep. Game two, his Azir looked incredible again putting a bunch of hurt down on towards Zika. And now we're in game number three, forcing flashes a 30 CS lead once again. Icon has definitively controlled this lane throughout the series. This is what happened in the bottom left hand of your screen. Just a lot of damage coming through with the shockwave. And, uh, cleanse away in the end. I think he was scared about Maestro who was rolling in, but now is Zika having to back away and return to lane. OMG have the shove, they have Herald mid, and the poke's starting to come down from my boy. Zika can get in over here and clear the wave, but you still got to deal with that Rift Herald. Yes, you do. But enough damage. Actually, the turret will not drop today. So good defense from Beachy Gaming, but we're starting to see how OMG can start sieging and threatening away these turrets. And Troll Marvel somehow lands. Zika with the poke down onto Holder. Ignite was picked up and dropped on him as well. He moves to half health. And Zika's just waiting on the side for someone to over overstep. The power of Zoe we see in this league. This is the thing, though. This is why I wanted to see Vici try and fight a little bit earlier. You can see how much damage is coming out from Zika. And that was one combo onto one of the tankiest members of OMG. 
Uh, as this dragon is about to spawn, though, at least they are shoving OMG back. Vichy are getting control as Pike's looking to try and pick off Curse. Drop off the again, but nothing to be followed up here. OMG defending their own turret. We're sitting mid for a bit. As iBoy just finished Cull, that's what you see off the side of your screen. And bit of damage from old Zika. It's interesting to see the, the build that Icon has gone for, though. When we talked about this game, we were like, hey, look, both these teams want to scale. They want to get towards the late game. And this is kind of the more common build that we're starting to see on Orianna because of the spike you get in the mid game with the, the GLP. But I'd nearly argue in this game because you know you're waiting for Aphelios to come online, because you're waiting for SMLZ to come online, and Vici have been so slow in enacting any sort of game plan. There's an argument here for Icon to go towards that more late game scaling build with getting a Seraphs of his own, starting to go in towards these more damage oriented builds where you pass a serious punch when you hit the late game. Well, at the very least, we're coming crucial now as Trouble Mobile lands again over the wall. The poke doesn't connect. Uh, was Teleport Bird? No, it wasn't. My eyes deceiving me. But instead, we're going to watch Curse come on down as we're A ramming. Oh, yeah, we are. Now, we've got a dragon to fight over, so it's not like we're doing this for no reason, but Beachy will have the priority with the wave going first, and OMG have to walk into them. Zika hasn't quite been able to land the poke, though, and as long as OMG get vision for SMLZ, he can really oh. hurt right now. Maestro went oh. a bit too far forward. He's going to get hooked in, goes golden in the nick of time. I've called the Forge God layers down onto three, searing charge with the follow up as well. Cube's ulti, and iBoy's ulti was quite massive, sorry, as Maestro lives for now the poke from SMLZ in the back line. Or even has to flash at the end of the play. And somehow Maestro lived. Somehow Vici won the fight. As Icon walking in here into iBoy, he's had a great series, Dagda, but that was just not good. It really wasn't. And with Vici's two carries surviving on what's a lot of HP compared to anyone else in this game, Vici will be able to turn towards this dragon and start their conquest of the Ocean Dragons. Oh, yeah, waiting for that fight and uh, OMG walking into them. Dragon going over to Vici Gaming. Three more to go for them. And a weird fight from OMG where yeah, they tried to get some vision for SMLZ so he could start poking on his own, but weren't quite able to get as much as they would like. And Icon burning that uh, that very early shockwave. You'll see it here. On towards just Maestro. It's not really worth it in the end. Maestro goes to, does a good job of going golden, but watch here. SMLZ has to reposition, but he's gone brought straight into the damage from iBoy as this Infernum starts to wreak havoc. And then Zika does a, a really good job of forcing OMG back so Vici can buy a bit of time. And then as he said, Hysterics, Icon, trying to make these plays happen, trying to pick up Ikes, but just finds an iBoy instead. I don't know what you expect there as Icon, but at the very least, iBoy getting the shutdown is massive. Icon at 220 CS at 20 minutes. He was quite large himself, had a bounty with no kills, but now iBoy has two himself, has two items. It's a Felios time as the Death Sentence connects and Maestro doesn't have the escape plan this time with the uh, watch down as Zeke is doing his own bit of leg work. iBoy will follow up with the poke here. But we got a dragon in hand. There is a Baron up. One more mistake from either team could net them. That is that's a ridiculous back from SNLC who now has two items and is TPing back to life. And I mean, look, you can see not even the Colonel is sure which way this one's going to go. So SMLZ, as he's ramping up, is going to look great. Icon, we already talked about, has gone for a bit of more of a mid-game orientated build, but still going to be relatively strong. We just want to see this Shockwave kept more for when the fights get a bit more chaotic. And Icon can play forward and try and get onto the likes of iBoy and Zika, rather than using it to try and pick off Maestro or Ikes at the start of these fights. As we've seen, best part about Shockwave is catching people out in rotation and being able to silence either a kill or two. Well, the big thing here is the range discrepancy from iBoy makes it a lot easier for Icon to threaten iBoy. And while that shockwave is still up, yep. iBoy has to give a lot of respect to that ability. So it means he's got to be a little bit further back. He can't be as aggressive as he wants to be. And then the, a lot of the consistent damage that iBoy could be churning out isn't quite there. So it means your Vici are relying on Zika to try and be the main source of damage for them. I just love that we're sitting mid once again. And our camera's stuck here because 80 carries are here. But there's always this support play. You know, the hook sent out, Sora doing the same, maybe Icon in the wing. Meanwhile, though, Zika's up topside by himself getting this solo goal. This is what Vici in about 1,000 gold lead at 22 minutes. And Bit of gold well deserved by Zika, who needs to start catching up to Icon. 
So, this is getting too interesting territory. Because we're getting to 23 minutes into the game. We've had very little interaction on both sides. Next Dragon is up in two minutes, but look at the items that are starting to be completed. So SMLZ, as he said, completed that second item. Crucially, is the Riley's Crystal Scepter. So when you look at the GLP that's on Icon, the Riley's Scepter that's on SMLZ, the box as well that can come through from Sora, Vici, at least the, the four members that aren't called Zika, are really going to struggle to get on top of OMG because yeah. of all the kite back, because of the slows. So I, OMG, in theory, should have a better time of poking. But the problem is Zika has been doing a fantastic job in this Zoe. He's got the Oblivion Orb, he's got a Luden's Echo. His poke is going to do a lot of work in this game as well. Plus Calibrum with ulti or, you know, Graviton with ulti, Infernum with ulti. Uh, iBoy still has a bit himself. So the follow-up from iBoy Zika as a combo is a bit of threat. Almost toward the third item for this Aphelios. Oblivion Orb, as you mentioned, was picked up by Zika. I guess we're just going to wait till the next Dragon. Says both teams, a minute left remaining. No one really going to threaten the Baron at this point, but we know with the Molten Edge upgrade, iPoy does have threat. Turret actually will go down, thanks to SMLZ pushing the wave, but there is a Aphelios who almost has Chakram. The big thing here, though, is that Icon has to go top here to clear this wave that Zeke has pushed in. Zeke still has teleport, so can join in for a fight. Icon is also going to be late on this reset. He wants to back and finish his Spellbinder, I believe is what he's going for here. But it means that then he won't be able to join into this fight either as he's on his way back out. It's actually the uh, the Banshee's Veil that he's decided to opt towards instead. Right. Trying to avoid some of the poke from Zika. But if Vici turn directly towards this dragon as it spawns, or at least get control of this river, Icon will be a little bit late to this play as Zika decides to TP. You definitely respect the purchase here from Icon when you've got iBoy with Graviton. Again, we talked about it. Maestro's auto attack, Zika's trouble bubble. There's a lot he has to deal with right now. Sora is going to be caught out, but no follow-up damage. OMG push back in this mid lane and Dragon's up. This one they're going to potentially give over to the threat of a deeper push mid or going up towards the Baron. They don't really have the damage to do the Baron. Um, Yes, you got a lot of damage that can come out from SMLZ, as obviously that ore, the ult, ramps up in damage over time for SMLZ the more you use it. Mm. But it's not like you're an A, well, AD, or at least on hit Kogma, where you can rip through that health bar. Cube, though, approaching this. I mean, he's face checking, of course he can. Ball out, Vici in the middle of River Curse and Sora making their escape. I don't believe Vici saw them run away. So, walking into River, clearing out the vision. Mike's actually spotting him out. Curse with the Dark Passage. Thankfully, the support is a fresh. So the problem for Vici here is that although they are getting some of these objectives, they can very quickly burst down the Baron, but they definitely, definitely need the Baron to try and crack open OMG. Between Icon, between SMLZ, the wave clear is going to be far too high. So Vici are looking for an opportunity to... Um, okay, well, Zika's just walked on in. Opportunity to get hosed down, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and take a whole burst damage combo as well. But look, Zika doesn't go down, which is the main point. But what VG are looking to do here is to find an opportunity to either rush down the Baron or catch members of OMG at a lot of these objectives where Vici can go for a Sleepy Trouble Bubble over the wall, get a huge amount of poke off at Zika, and then look for a numbers advantage favorite fight or, as we talked about, getting that Baron buff, then starting to siege up and seeing if they can make some magic happen when they're able to actually keep their minions alive long enough for, away from SMLZ. You know what's going to happen, though, Dagnan? What's that? Three and a half minutes. That's how long we're going to wait. We're going to farm again for three and a half minutes. As you talked about, both teams happy to let this one roll a bit. And especially since we've got a Phantom Dancer and I, boy. Wait till the next dragon, see what happens. SMLZ will probably have the Leandrix Torment by then. I assume Spellbinder will be on the way for Icon. And yeah, you know, we got four <laughs> kills in 26 minutes after both game one and two was decided at 15 minutes, even less. Like 10 minutes into into game one and game two, Beach decided, OMG The decided. Nexus was blowing up for both sides at this, at time. this stage. Yeah. And we still have tier twos available. <laughs> I mean, everyone's just like, well, handshake. And uh, fair enough, you know. I mean, at this point, but you know, you know, the problem is by, you know, the LPL being sponsored by KFC. I just get hungry all broadcast. 
I just feel like some Kentucky chicken, you know? It's also the Brock has starts at Mountain Time. Because it starts at 5. It did at our time. time. And then we go until about 11. And we yeah. don't get a huge amount of break in between, so. Oh, we don't get you a kind of just end between. up hungry, hungry we a get, lot of the time. We get a break for me to run to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, with my 18 bottles of water, I need it every break. <laughs> it's a very far way away. We've got to get the, get the pace on. Well, much like this game, Dagda. <laughs> I don't care what the cops want. My league is my league, you know. I don't know what I call it my league. The LPL is is not known for this style of play. And it feels like, also, shout out to the person who tweeted us for the smorgasbord. Oh, yeah. Um, see, I told you I was right. I told you it was a word. But uh, the best part about a smorgasbord is, you know, you need if you go to a fancy house, a good smorgasbord will have five different types of cheese. Olives, you know. And one of those cheeses better be feta. I love creamy feta. Mm -mm. You know, I found a place here that sells feta. And uh, there's Greek and there's Danish style Just before feta. we go up, I just want to give a quick shout out to that person. I hope everything's doing better. That's all I'm saying. With? Yeah. The person who tweeted at us for the smorgasbord. Yeah. Yeah. I just hope things are going better for you. Oh, good. Yeah. Such a nice just person. Just want to give a little shout out. Okay. Do you yeah. know the person? And I tweeted, they tweeted at me a little bit. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I, I was just like, uh, did you buy the smorgasbord? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> what, no. What a legend you are. <laughs> Thanks for tweeting if me. Anyone, Here's the smorgasbord. If anyone would like to buy us a smorgasbord for this, so that then we can sit down with some nice cheese and meat, it'd be great. Spell, spell yeah. smorgasbord. Look, it's clearly Scandinavian. It and definitely I don't is. have... The oh. vocabulary. Hang on, <laughs> Maestro's going to pull him in. We've got a fight, finally, and Dragon's not up for 30 seconds. Christmas comes early as Sora puts down the box score. The Forge God lay it onto the three backliners. Curse goes into Dominus, but for OMG, I don't think they win this fight anymore. Redemption comes down, and Maestro almost makes me choke on Saliva as the poke <laughs> onto Hacker on the backline. No kills. Almost death. As this is just going to be Dragon for Vici. Well, Zika might be going down. Yeah, Shockwave there flashed away from... And Icon still the forefront of this comp. So yeah, no real damage being able to turn back and forth. Vici now will get their third Dragon of the game. And SMLZ, like, he's got enough items. It's just unfortunately for him not quite able to land the damage that he would You know, uh, Midbeast, shout out to Midbeast, who uh, a fellow Aussie, actually put out a video recently to uh, lose more skins. And this was actually one of them. Because you know the, uh, the oh, Bio yes, Arcane Barrage. Yes. You actually see where it's going down because of the little seed on the ground. Mm -hmm. Whereas the normal skin, you only see that thin red line. So this one's actually very easy to spot where the ultimate from Cogmore is going. As you'll see in a second, you see the little seed on the ground is always like very obvious. The other one is the um, the uh, battle cast. Yeah. yeah, as Ike's going to be hooked in, played in, but he's very tanky. Subjugate. Not available, it might not even be needed. This curse going to be locked down as well with the Gravitum. The poke is massive and curse is not strong enough. As Ike survives, so does Maestro. Four versus five, the re engage. The cameraman flips out because Cube is onto the backline versus four. Searing charge not needed yet. As five versus four now, the reality for OMG for about 40 seconds. While Zika keeps landing these trouble bubbles, Icon has a cleanse if he gets hit. Luckily, he won't. Beat you now. Can do what they want. Yeah, and I mean, they can turn towards this Baron if they want to. Eyeboy looks like he wants to shove up mid a little bit, but I mean, you still have to contend with enough poke from OMG, but with two low mana on both the Orianna and the Kogma, I'm surprised they're not just taking this Baron. You know what? They want this game to go longer. Why, though? <laughs> they want four <laughs> oceans for the absolute guarantee. Sure. I mean, you're already winning sure. these pretty hard. You've already got Zika, who's turning out far more poke than SMLZ is capable of right now. Um, and I think as well, as we talked about, if Curse and Hacker ever go in to try and engage, to try and set up SMLZ and Icon for some of these big plays, well, you're just enabling iBoy so much in those fights. So it ends up in this messy back and forth where this game is really going to be decided by who's able to turn out more damage between Zika and SMLZ. Yep. And right now, Zika's the one in the lead. Zika and SMLZ, don't forget iBoy, who is almost four items with Death Dance on the way. The biggest problem that OMG are going to face is if they group up, iBoy's late game ulti is just going to shred, destroy, and then him with Infernum. Pretty much the same. 
Plus, you have Orn upgrades. So, folks, you're seeing gold at the top of your screen at 32 minutes here. But Vici actually heavily in the lead due to the ornaments that are picked up here. Two for himself and then one across the board. Bar Ikes at this point. And Maestro. Uh, the Ludens Pulse, the Molten Edge, going to add a couple of extra K. Plus the Sunfire Cape and Majora's Mask upgrade that's given to Cube. But you know what I said? We're going to wait till the Ocean Soul that's now available for Beach Gaming in two minutes. And, I mean, look at the items that they have for this fight as well. You're looking at Aphelios, who's already got a QSS, so he's going to be totally fine in case any sort of CC does manage to sneak its way past the front line. We're going to towards a Death Dance as well, which means he's going to be incredibly tanky. And when you're looking at the far side as well, double Void Staff now completed for the two members of OMG. So any sort of magic resist that is on this Vici squad may not be as potent as it used to be. Interesting that the Banshee's Veil isn't cancelled out by the knockup, I guess. But yeah. By, you know, the pillar right in the middle is how you get the knockup on Trundle. I suppose because, like, if it burned the Banshee's Veil and, like, you just stayed there, it'd be a little bit frustrating because you just stuck on top I, of it. I again. guess I'd expect to see the knockup and maybe the Banshee's Veil go, but... Then again, that doesn't make sense, so I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying, because this series this has been... been yeah. This series... Why do I get these? <laughs> you can talk to it's Clement, a too. It's Dude, a test of you. A BLG <laughs> OMG. I mean, I've done almost every OMG series at this point. It's, people would say I'm the biggest OMG fan, but I'm quite the opposite at this point. And You know did what? did a lot of DMO as well. I did a lot of DMO. I've, I've managed to avoid the LNG series. Well, I, want the ro I got one Rogue Warriors series. And I'm still smiling about it. It's crazy to me. I feel like maybe maybe someone doesn't like me, you know? Fair enough. Maybe I complain too much. As Ike's getting poked down here. And you know what? SMLZ is a nuisance. Here's blue buff. But for some reason, Ivoy hits once and his poke is about the same. So with the Ocean Dragons, three at the ready. Vici have themselves a bit of sustain. 20 seconds till the Ocean Soul comes up, Daggy. There is the opportunity here for Vici defense to just run towards the Baron or Get just apply the pressure to Hacker. SMLZ with this blue buff is a serious nuisance, oh though. Oh, God. Look at all these oh Arcane Barrages that are coming out. God, look at Eyeboy Shuriken's call. The Forge God comes in. OMG almost dead before the fight begins. Goodbye to Hacker. They stood there for a while. Shockwave's great, but Eyeboy doesn't get hit by it. His Maestro is the trade off. That sentence lands, but saw a low while Zika. Hitting off the side, Curse can't get in. iBoy says, howdly doodly. Feels like Curse is nothing at all. Over the wall, he'll survive for now, but onto the drag while Sora gets burst down. Icon doesn't have a shockwave anymore, and all they have to do is kill with Zika. As the zone control there, two man gravitum. Icon cleanses away, flashes forward. Zeke almost kills the yucky dog. And walking away, OMG, they're gonna give away the Ocean Soul. Zeke is gonna nail down here and let OMG know that there's no place like home. Here comes iBoy, <laughs> cats out. Forward goes Curse, and SMLZ cancels his back. Icon might actually get his through. No! Searing charge connects, and now all in the bin. Just like the fight, and just like the game. <laughs> Ocean Soul for VG. They're going to start pushing in this bottom lane. Baron is up and available for whenever they want to take it. The poke from SMLZ is going to be so little in comparison to all that region that's coming through from a four-stacked ocean. And finally, it looks like VG, although they didn't have the games that they would have wanted to from game number two, looking very confident again. Now, a lot of the audience feel like it's only a 3k gold lead, but look at the ornaments, look at the ocean soul on an Aphelios, and look at these death timers. Of course, they're going to be running it in. Gold won't matter anymore if you have a dead Nexus, and... You know what? Doesn't matter. We won. That's what Beachy Gaming will scream as well as to their deaths they die. And this game number three was a long wait, but we got to a good Beachy fight. They did play out the final moments well, and they do get a crucial win to net them six and six. As you say, Vici Gaming now sitting 6-6, six and six, but unfortunately for 